I bid you welcome. Hi, welcome back to the Sons of Mjolnir. If it's your first time with us, thanks for joining in to our spooky season episode. I'm The Last Gorgon. I'm Fat Thor. And I am Cap. And like I said, today's the spooky season episode. So we're going to be talking about some of our favorite comics to read this spooky season, whether it's directly tied to Halloween or whether it's just spooky supernatural vibes in general. Uh, Thor, where are we starting off today, my man? Start off with Ruins of Ravencroft. And now I'm going to give full disclosure here. I haven't read this complete one. But I know Gorgon is the expert here, so I'm going to let Gorgon kick it off. Gorgon, why don't you give us a little summary of what uh, Ruins of Ravencroft is? And to start, why don't you uh, let the people out there know that might not know, what is Ravencroft exactly? So Ravencroft is a, quote, mental institution for the criminally insane, end okay. quote. But what it really is over time has become a place in Marvel that's like, I guess, akin to Arkham Asylum, but almost entirely more supernatural based in time, right? Mm -hmm. I Man Wolf has been there. Um, like all kinds of different people are there that, that deal with creatures. Carnage has had a stint there. Uh, Morbius, I'm pretty sure. Dracula, every major supernatural like creature within the Marvel Universe has at some point a tie back to Ravencroft. Mm -hmm. Ravencroft ended up owned by Wilson fisk who picked it up um as his of course it would right with with everything that goes on there and so in ruins of ravencroft it's about him walking through it walking through the grounds and misty night and the guy who who is man wolf come through and they're walking it with him trying to investigate obviously doing their thing because who would trust fisk with yeah. anything <laughs> let alone a place that has a long history of abuse of people and experimentation on people with supernatural abilities nobody mm -hmm. right and it's it's this little short collection of stories about that experience so it's all kind of dark and spooky a journal is found there um dating back to to what would become like it's one of its earliest founders in it um of a gentleman named Cortland cassidy um, who is is a longtime descendant of Cletus Cassidy. I was just about to say um, Cassidy. Was, that sounds a little familiar there. Yeah, and he actually was a serial killer. He's the, the first serial killer in the West in the Marvel Universe. Um, and it's okay. because he found a tribe of natives outside of that area who worshipped Null at the time and believed God was coming. Of course. Um, and the man had a touch and then believed God was coming and went on a rampage killing people for no so it's yeah the the bond between symbiotes and and the and and the cassidy family goes back a long time and it's this crazy story that's not just about them but it's all bound to everything that's discovered while at ravencroft with the nonsense of it and it's just a good spooky time season story yeah definitely it sounds like it and uh correct me if i'm wrong but this is coming off the heels of absolute carnage correct yep okay yep, yep. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I haven't personally read it. I looked up a couple panels uh, before we started recording here just to kind of refresh and definitely spooky vibes. I saw one panel with, uh, like you were saying, the tribes, uh, tribe people, and he yeah. had the venom thing like on the chest. I was like, oh, shit. It's either right before or right after Absolute Carnage. I can't remember if Fisk owned it during Absolute Carnage, but mm -hmm. there was a deal that happened there during Absolute Carnage with Misty Knight and, and Manwolf and all them with it. And yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. this whole whole thing there. So it's it's a fun little read. Awesome. Cap, have you read uh, Ruins of Ravencroft? I have actually read it during, I think it was leading up to King and Black. Mm -hmm. I was doing my homework, you know, so I had to dive into that. As recommended by Gorgon. Yeah. It was very good. I say, of course, recommended by Gorgon. So you liked it then? <laughs> yes, I did. It was enjoyable. Another one that we picked out was Scream. And this is a Scream Curse of Carnage, right, uh, Gorgon? Yeah, yeah. I wrote by Clay McLeod Chaplin. Um, he did a Clay did a really cool job because prior to that, you know, uh, uh, Andy Benton had been bonded with Mania for a long time and then not with a symbiote for a while. And she's been put through the ringer mm -hmm. and he ends up binding her with Scream and she picks up Scream. And it's as she learns to accept herself and like who she is with Scream, Scream teaches her a lot about their history um, and, and this is where we learn like of how 
interconnected symbiotes are to Thor's mythos. Um, it's It goes all the way back to the story of Beowulf and the Grendel because those come from Null. Um, and, and then Thor was there, and there's this just like almost Lovecraftian element to the way some of the villains are drawn in it. Very spooky, underwater vibes, like ageless deity kind of vibes to it. Mm-hmm. Super super heavy spooky season stuff i you get to see scream evolve have like five six different forms within it uh you you get to learn about big mother which is where scream comes from originally within it i guess like back in the day it's it's this whole crazy adventure but it's definitely super spooky hell yeah i mean i'm not color me shocked that both of your picks were symbiote centered but like you said both of these are perfect for this spooky season and not only that but we've talked about this at length especially in our last episode about symbiotes if everybody wants to go check that out and hear more about all this symbiote madness but uh how we talked about you know that symbiotes go back so far in the marvel universe that like a lot of people don't realize how deep the history of the symbiotes come you know come from and i think these two stories in particular are really really great examples of like you said how symbiotes have been interwoven into the world for a long time and a lot of you know spooky things that are in the world of marvel come from symbiotes and or null and null has been you know kind of puppet in things from the background it's like since the beginning of time almost so yeah i think those are two amazing picks thanks man those are my two and then i know cap cap you picked us some dc ones for today right for spooky season yes i um i chose well obviously fat thor you were in charge of picking the long halloween so i followed up with dark victory and haunted night and also deceased Ooh, okay we got a big stack from cap today obviously if you're going for halloween you have to finish off you know sort of the trilogy um you have to go on to dark victory and then for spooky season specifically you have to go on the night because that is halloween themed mm-hmm. um scarecrow is a main antagonist of it definitely recommend reading it if you haven't and obviously deceased zombies mm-hmm. you can't leave zombies out in halloween you know yeah i mean uh superhero zombies it's like you know peanut butter and chocolate just goes together so well exactly so exactly so give me a little bit of rundown on deceased because i have again i i feel like i'm the non-reader of the group today but i haven't read deceased either but i obviously know about it it was huge when it was coming out. I've seen all the covers, which all the covers are freaking amazing. But I obviously I know the basics. DC heroes are zombies, but kind of give me a rundown. So like, is this a outer world story? Is this like main DC universe and like everyone just gets a zombie virus? Like what's the kind of what's the rundown with this? So it's basically an else world story. Mm-hmm. Um there's I'm pretty sure it's an apocalyptic apocalyptic virus if I'm saying that right mm-hmm. um it can, it's apocalypse did he he was the first victim of it but because he had cyborg cyborg then brought it back to DC Earth Prime one whatever okay. you want to call it mm-hmm. um he brought it back but then it was transferable through like phone screens TV screens and stuff so oh, it was like a shit. Yeah, so if you if you watch if you viewed something on your phone, you got the virus, then you become a zombie. Yeah, and I so love on, so that. on, so on. That's a super yeah, starts... creative, interest. I, I like I said, I didn't know about the you know actual story. I've never heard of that like method of transmission. I guess with zombies, I think that's super creative and interesting. I like yeah. the way cell phones and tech are being used in comics these days by mm-hmm. villains for things. Like, I, I wasn't aware of that until the zombie thing started in DC, so I missed the first couple of issues of it. But, like, Marvel did that with, uh, what was it, uh, Black Knight's Curse of the Ebony Blade. 
um, at the end, Mordred, it turns out, has had this app that, that he's had everybody, you know, use and give their stuff in order for him to give access to them and make a bunch of them as pawns and minions once he plugs in this crown that he's plugged into, like, electronic stuff everywhere. And so it's all Mordred, evil dark magic with these people doing his thing from that. And it's I like seeing that Marvel, or in, I guess comic writers in general, are really taking that sometimes our cell phones are part of the villain in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's sort of similar to uh, Superior Iron Man as well. Remember, yeah. Tony made that that app and infected everyone, and <laughs> all hell broke loose. Hey, man, Terminator had it right. Technology is going to be the death of us. <laughs> I'm right, man. So everyone, so Ultron. everyone gets this virus, <laughs> right? And so. Like, yep. are there people left? Not, I mean, I'm guessing there has to be non-zombie people left to make a story, right? Yeah. So, um, once you contract the virus, you can then pass it through. Like, you can pass it on, more or less, same typical zombie way. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yes. So it takes out a massive chunk mm -hmm. of heroes. Um, all the typical heroes that you would expect to survive, mm -hmm. don't, which makes the story more interesting for me like in general i think it makes it more interesting because you're not looking at it from so a bit of a spoiler batman gets wiped out and pretty early mm -hmm. um but it's not like you're not watching it from batman's perspective like, aha, you know batman's <laughs> going to save the day or superman's going to save the day mm. no <laughs> not um, this time so yeah that that's uh that's one of the main things i like it's there's no the trinity aren't leading it it's mm -hmm. different you know yeah, absolutely. So, I, I mean, I guess spoilers out there, but so Soups gets the virus, yeah? Yes. Um, uh, so it's... how does that work? Like, I don't know. Like, I guess I guess it's comics, you know, who really cares? But, you know, so I, is Superman susceptible to, you know, like sickness? You know Again, what I mean? spoiler. Yes. Um, do you want a spoiler? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, go, go yeah hard, for, go hard. for all of our listeners out there or people watching this that haven't read to see full spoilers ahead. So, yeah, spoil it away, Cap. Yeah, so um, Barry Allen, the Flash, he gets a, he gets a virus. Um, I can't remember if he's the first Flash to get it or if not. But anyway, he's trying to save someone or he's doing his thing. But the Flash then gets it because, well, obviously, the fastest man alive. Mm-hmm. He can then spread it like wildfire. So yeah. Superman then tries to stop him, but instead of chasing him, he goes the opposite way. So what happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force? You know, so uh, he goes through the Flash, but the Flash also sort of goes through him, cuts him. You know, and then that's how Superman then gets a virus. Damn, which is also but a super takes... creative way to give Superman the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, you know. I, I gotta read deceased now. I'm uh, about to go pick up some trades here in a second. <laughs> um, man, see the hardbacks as well. The hardbacks are so beautiful. Yeah, everything about them just incredible. Speaking of zombies, I gotta come out with so one of my favorites is Marvel Zombies, which is, I mean, I obviously well, I completely think. different, but you know, kind of the same concept. You know, you got your Marvel heroes as zombies and. I've always just loved the story. Just again, it's kind of perfect for spooky season. I mean, superheroes as zombies, what's not to like, right? Like it's just a fun concept. Uh, so in the Marvel zombies, uh, I can't remember exactly how they get the virus. If one of you guys can remind me, I want to say it comes from like the negative zone or some you know one of some kind of dimension they get you know that's where the virus comes and it's also kind of like an else world story similar to the uh, dc one but the thing that i really loved about marvel zombies and i thought made it for like some really creepy moments and if you guys have read it uh you guys kind of know what i'm talking about but that the they don't lose their minds when they become zombies like they're still conscious and they're still like who they are more or less but they just are like have this hunger and there's a really intense one with uh peter parker that i don't want to you know spoil too much but yeah it it's one of those where it's fun and kind of goofy at times but then at other times it honestly kind of makes you a little like uneasy you're like i don't i like this but i don't know if i like this you know what i mean that was one thing i liked about marvel zombies was 
they were still themselves mm-hmm. until obviously they got so hungry. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was enjoyable seeing that as well. Like, because most zombie stories you don't see it from, you, they're just animals basically. It's mm-hmm. a typical brain dead zombie. Yeah, but uh, it's nice to see it from a different perspective. You know. Mm-hmm. Very like Resident Evil meets Marvel, I guess, is a good way to put Marvel zombies, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. I, yeah, it's it's you end up with like different calibers of it, and it's yeah, yeah, exactly. And like I said, I think what I like about both of these stories is, like, I'm a, I'm a, I wouldn't say like I'm a huge like horror freak, you know what I mean? Like I'm an expert in horror stuff, but I enjoy myself a good horror movie, and I love a good zombie <laughs> flick too. And one of the things that I appreciate with these kind of things is when someone can take a story like a zombie story or a vampire story, what have you, and figure out a way to make it new and fresh and like interesting, you know, cause there's how, you know, hundreds of zombie stories, vampires and stuff, but like for like with deceased, with the whole virus being transmittable through technology, like that's super interesting and creative to me and like something I haven't seen before. The other pick I had was uh, Batman Long Halloween, which we mentioned briefly here. Yeah, I mean, classic. I had to throw it in there just because, I mean, it's Long Halloween. Halloween's in the title, right? Like, how can you not add it to your Halloween read list? That's a fair point. Well, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say about long Halloween other than it's great. It's a great story. It's uh, I mean, if you guys liked uh, the Batman movie, Matt Reeves is the Batman. You'll love, you'll love long Halloween. It's, I wouldn't say it's a direct, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Adaptation, adaptation of it. Yeah, exactly. Not a direct adaptation of it, but definitely takes a lot from the story of long Halloween. So again, if you like that, you'll really love long Halloween. What do you what are you guys uh thoughts on Long Halloween? Man, you know, it's been a minute since I sat down and I just reread Long Halloween. Mm-hmm. I think I think my favorite thing about it is like you said, everybody's read it at least once, right? As a comic yeah. book fan. I but everything that it has inspired, I feel like is is where the long Halloween for me really sets its place as like a foundational Halloween story for comics, right? Mm-hmm. It's everything that it inspired solidified it as great right whether it's the the batman movie by matt reeves whether it's the arkham games right and its influence mm-hmm. on those if anybody out here's played the arkham series of batman what it did to to just as a, a good fuck if, if everything can go wrong in one night it's going wrong on this night in halloween the world is against you like you have like mm-hmm. 14 hours to 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 save everything you are literally just Batman. Like good fucking luck. Yeah. I you know, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a it's just a great story and everything that's come from it has been nothing short of fantastic. I yeah, it's it's definitely a must read. I think one of the main things I like about it is how it starts in Halloween and it finishes in how like a year apart, you know, like your typical Batman story, you find him, he's solving everything in, what, within 15, 20 minutes, roughly. <laughs> but this one takes place over a year. I really like that about it. Mm-hmm. You know? It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, it makes the story feel more, I guess, like, uh, what's the word? Like, consequential. Like, the con- like, there's consequences to what's happening. And like you said, it's not something that he can just solve in one night. You know what I mean? It's yeah. something that... <clears throat> takes a good long while and i think that kind of just again gives more weight to the story and not only the story but the threat that is being proposed in the story it's sort of in my opinion anyway it sort of shows you that batman isn't as what's the word isn't as clinical in finishing a case as people like to make out it could take them over a year to find this killer you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) come on man (laughs) those are some of our favorite picks let us know in the comments what some of your uh favorite reads are for this halloween but moving on from comics uh we got to talk about werewolf by night marvel's first halloween special just came out a couple weeks ago and i want to get your guys' thoughts on it i know cap uh has caught a little bit of it hasn't been able to finish it yet but just your overall thoughts. What did you guys think of Werewolf by Night, Marvel's first Halloween special? Cap, you're watching it right now, right? Like you're 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 in the middle of watching it. 
Yes, not right, not currently. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, you're in the middle of watching it. So, like, I, yeah. what are your thoughts right now as you're currently watching it? Um, I haven't watched a great deal of it, but from what I've seen, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's the vibe and the feel that is a lot different from what I was expecting going into it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, I was black and white. So I'm not going to lie, the black and white sort of put me off, which is why I took so long to check it out. But it has a real good horror feel to it, and I like that. Uh, Gorgon, what do you think? Man, I you know it came out when I was on vacation, and mm-hmm. uh, so I waited a night, and and we were all watching spooky stuff, and and we stayed up late watching. I can't even remember what. Um, and everybody went to bed. So next morning, I'm up early, and I'm watching Werewolf by Night. And I remember my my mother in law walks in, and she goes what the fuck are you watching in here? Because she sees this black and white movie and people getting murdered on TV and she she assumes it's old school. And I'm like, that's good because that's yeah. obviously what they were trying to emulate, right? Mm-hmm. Use, use and, and, and just pay homage to a lot of the greats. And I really enjoy what they've done with the lighting, the old school sound in it. I They did a, a really good job at, at making a modern story feel older with the elements mm-hmm. for it i yeah i i like it a lot uh the relationship between god i can't remember his name now and man thing is is so cool mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy getting to see them in it uh elsa i absolutely enjoyed i know some people have had some criticisms on elsa's betrayal in this i don't All have right. any of those criticisms because i the thing about Elsa is she is a character who how she acts today is because of what benefits her today. Mm-hmm. So if that's what benefited her today and that's how she chose to act, then that makes sense for Elsa Bloodstone to me. I mm-hmm. thought the the lady who's, who's playing her did fantastic. I can't wait to see her come back in the MCU in some other capacity. Mm-hmm. I, this is probably in my top five Marvel projects right now, for sure. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, I thought the lady who played Elsa was awesome. So you're going to have to give give me a little bit of a rundown. So uh, Elsa Bloodstone in the comics, Monster Hunter, correct? Uh, So what was the issue that some, I mean, people complain about everything. So People complain about everything. People were just like, I guess, mostly upset that she's not this cocky in your face self-assured running around with her double barrel shotgun and just blasting shit from the start. Right. And I'm like, oh, so you just don't like nuance. Right. You just you just don't actually like story. Mm -hmm. You just want action. Got it. Right. There there has to be a reason for a character to become the way they are. So cocky, so self-assured, so Mm -hmm. arrogant. Right. I sure she's a bloodstone. But like, what does that mean? Right. Give Mm -hmm. us backstory. That's what this story was. It gave backstone on what does it mean to be a bloodstone where does she come from like mm-hmm. touches on like what happened in her childhood a little bit i uh, yeah i really enjoyed it i think people just like i said some people just don't want exposition and they just mm-hmm. want guns action blame 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 go yeah. you know i i i like nuance yeah absolutely and i would argue too at least from i haven't watched it in the last couple of days but from my memory i feel like she did have that kind of confidence and whatnot and they, like you said not in the sense of like she's just running in like bah, 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 bah. but you know i forget she has the the interaction with the older lady in the beginning and she says something along the lines of like yeah i'm coming to get the stone like there was like no question of like oh maybe i'll get it like she's like at least no the question. way i took it was like she came there to grab her shit and she was getting the hell out of there like she didn't even care about this tournament or whatever she's like whatever like i'm not worried about that i'm here for this so i like i said the way i took it i felt that kind of confidence and like self-assuredness in her performance like i said that's that's just me i'm not an elsa bloodstone uh expert or anything i haven't really read much about her so i thought her depiction was fine and like you said i'm excited to see her come back same like i said i thought it was great i think people just really just wanted you know just to immediately be like you know, the things that, that if it were a normal MCU movie, people would criticize, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, the character just walks in and there's no, 
you know, nuance to them on why they are the way they are. They just walk in and just start blasting and say cheesy, egotistical, self-assured quote line here and then move on about their life, right? Mm -hmm. It would get destroyed on Twitter oh, yeah. if, if, if she was wrote the way people are acting like they want her wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah, I, you know, people just can't be made happy. I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, I am. And I agree with everything you guys both said. I loved it. I think I watched I, I actually watched it twice back to back at midnight when it came out because I was just like, this was so good. I got to go at this again and dissect everything. But yeah, I loved it. And like you guys said, too, I really loved the black and white aesthetic and like the whole the way that it made the story feel, the way that it it looked. I thought it looked awesome. And we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording. I was worried that the black and white would turn a lot of people off, kind of like Cap, you were saying that it like at first when you saw that, you were like, eh, I'm not sure about this. I thought a lot of people were going to feel that way. And I was honestly worried people weren't going to give it a chance because of that. <laughs> But I personally love when I first saw that I was like, let's go that made me more excited than anything because I'm a huge fan of like the old school universal monsters, like Dracula and werewolf and those old black and white movies. So I to me, it just brought me back to those movies. And like, in my mind, that's like Halloween to me. They do a cap. This might be a spoiler for you, so you can cover your ears if you want. <laughs> um, but they, uh, they, they, they give it the most true homage fashion I think I can imagine. The Wizard of Oz treatment, mm -hmm. I with with music and the color shift, and I think what made it feel so spectacular is like we were all expecting Werewolf by Night just to be black and white. Mm -hmm. The fact that there was a little bit of red had us all, you know, here or there with the amulet just being like, oh, yeah, this is great. The mm -hmm. fact that, that when they chose to do it, they played a bit of the Wizard of Oz music and, and Wizard of Oz that, mm -hmm. right, I, I think feels so cool because that's how the Wizard of Oz was. Yeah. Nobody expected it in color, right, when it came mm -hmm. out. Everybody's sitting at home watching it in black and white. And then what, you know, <laughs> I... And that's they kind of gave that feel by homaging it to a whole new generation. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun and unexpected, even if only we get the color for a brief moment there at the end. It was it was really nice to, yeah. to get to feel that in a movie where I didn't expect color to appear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think also, too, and again, this could just <laughs> be me looking too much into it like I always do. But I thought it uh, you could even look at it as like, when the color shifts again spoiler sorry cap but when the color shifts to me i felt like that was like the end of the special and then when we're in color it's like now we're back i, I like it's all in the marvel universe but i don't know to me it felt like okay now we're back into like reality if you would you know like this was Big picture yeah like this was our little like scary adventure but now these characters are in the big world, you know what I mean? And like, they were moving forward from this little spooky adventure, you know? And like I said, I thought that was a really interesting choice to do it and a cool, like visual way to, like I said, get that point across. Do you want to talk a little bit about man thing? So this was in the trailer. So cap not spoiling too much for you. But what'd you guys think of the inclusion of Man Thing? Were you guys surprised to see Man Thing? Uh, what What'd you have think? You I know you haven't. Pardon? Have you seen Man Thing yet? Are you far enough that no. you've seen him? No, not yet. No. Okay, oh. so we won't get too too much into it. But like I said, this was in the trailer. So Cap, when you saw that they were including Man Thing, what were your thoughts? Were you excited? Were um. Neither really. I, I wouldn't say I was excited or disheartened or anything. I was just cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Let's go. I, I yeah. have really any major thoughts towards it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when I saw the trailer with Man Thing, I thought, Man Thing with a werewolf. Okay. Maybe <laughs> we're getting like a Ruins of Ravencroft type thing, which hey. I had been pitching on Twitter that we should have an MCU <laughs> special for for a while. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I I was like, okay, maybe that's that's kind of cool, right? Wonder how they're going to do that. And then I saw it in, in the poster, and I went, ooh, I hope this is where we get, like, 
an egg of Dracula or something to lead us up for Blade. There's no mention of Dracula in Werewolf by Night, right? In any of this, no. I I was really kind I will of disappointed say, in that. I will say we do get, I don't, uh, my comic memory is failing me right now. I don't know if it's Dracula specific, but there is a shout when they show the vampire on the bust of the vampire and uh, Werewolf by Night, I forget his actual name, sorry, but the werewolf guy, he says like, oh, I've tangled with that one before. Like he looks a lot slower or something along those lines. But in yeah. the in the books, his dad, so his dad was a werewolf as well. That's how he gets the werewolf curse. And his dad, I think I want to say his mom gets killed by Dracula. And if not Dracula specifically, a vampire. And like his dad fights this vampire or whatever. But so when he says that in the sh in the show, I took that as a nod to that battle. And like I said, my comic knowledge, hopefully maybe someone in the comments can uh, refresh my memory. But I want to say it was Dracula. But like I said, I could be wrong on that. Oh, yeah nice yeah I like so, that. we, cool. so we could have had a dracula mention is my point <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there gorgon no you're fine speaking of dracula i that's one of the i know we were going to talk about other things that we're watching for spooky season mm -hmm. um i say if you guys have not watched netflix's dracula that they put out during quarantine it's three issue three episodes they're oh. a little more than an hour long each it is incredible I cannot praise that enough. I watch it every year, at least twice a year, and it is always so good. It's probably the best Bram Stoker's Dracula-inspired piece since the Bram Stoker's Dracula movie we got way back in the day with the Winona and young Keanu mm -hmm. and all that. Like, it is good. Yeah, I actually have seen that. I watched it when it first came out, you know, uh, during the pandemic. And but I got to be honest, I loved I loved the series, but the ending ending fell flat for me. I, in three in the yeah, third and, episode. Yeah, and I haven't watched it. I watched it the one time like I binged it was like super into it. And right. like I said, so I don't remember the specifics of it, but I just remember it ending. And I was like, that was really good. But the ending lost me, you know. It's a little, yeah, it's a little convoluted there at the end. It's got a lot of moving parts and it's, mm. yeah, I get that for I remember sure. But the it's first being, two were worth Yeah, it. the first two episodes are incredible. And like you said, I would say super like close to that vibe of like the, the original Dracula for sure. But like I said, I feel like for me, the ending and for lack of a better word, it was like really artsy, you know? And like one of those things where I was like, I know that this is a good ending, but it just, it's, I don't really get it. You know what I mean? I knew, like, I felt like the ending was very symbolic and had like a lot of symbolism there and like, you know, stuff with their relationship that I kind of just did not really get, like I said, but I like I said, that. other than that, I love the series that don't let for everyone out there. Don't let my opinion of the ending turn you away from it. The series was amazing. And you know, a lot of people probably will like the ending. It's just, um, can be a little stupid sometimes that stuff goes a little over my head you're not stupid it's, <laughs> yeah it's not stupid at all friend different strokes for different folks i'm sure cap's got some crazy thing that he watches in halloween that's ireland specific that we won't get it all here yeah so this is a perfect segue gorgon you brought us right into it so let's talk a little bit about some spooky time movies that we enjoy every i don't think there's a person out there that doesn't watch scary movies during october like leading up to halloween even if you're not a fan it's like you know even throw on halloween town or something everyone watches spooky movies during this time so i want to get your guys some of your guys's picks what are so uh gorgon you just said that you watch the dracula every year what are some movies that you guys watch like every october like you have to you know watch this cat Cap looks like he's got it in the bag yeah not even um before we go on to this segment is that dracula one the one produced by bbc uh yeah i think so yeah three issues yeah, yeah about an hour yeah. long really really fair good fair enough have you seen um, it nope <laughs> i uh i'm no i'm i'm not a fan of the bbc so uh, no. <laughs> i was just about to say i, I can imagine why <laughs> that's fair yeah. it's still very good though uh really nice. really good <laughs> I, uh, yeah it's 
don't get me wrong it might, it might be good <laughs> yeah it's like I'll, I'll take your word for it <laughs> leave it to the brush <laughs> <laughs> um spooky spooky films i watched this time of the year um i quite like i used to watch bram stoker's dracula film the one with gary oldman when mm-hmm. a writer and all that but um you know what the one i really like uh the one with lee is it lee evans is that his name lee evans not no, sure. Luke, no. Luke Evans. You're you're talking Luke about Evans, Dracula Untold. A... Yes, yes, that's a very good film. Okay, Excellent. I haven't really seen that one. That. Just got it's, added um... to Netflix and tied for Spooky Season. Okay, I'll put it on tonight then. It was I recommend it. It's very going to be Universal Pictures' big first jump into their quote uh, monster verse. Oh, so it's um, part of it was the then whole... going to tie into the mummy and all these other projects. And then obviously the mummy didn't work out for them. So they yeah. canceled their, their verse. I, uh, but he was going to be their reoccurring Dracula and he okay. did a really cool job with Dracula. Yeah. I remember seeing that in theaters. I'm man, that's, it's been a minute. Okay. So that, yeah. like yeah. you said, obviously the monster verse didn't, pan out like it was supposed to but so this movie was supposed to be like part of the monster verse yeah it would have been the first one within it it would have gone it and then the mummy with tom cruise okay for sure well then that that puts me in already because i i know again like you just said it didn't pan out obviously but when that was announced i was super excited for that again i'm a big fan of those like old school movies so when i heard the plans for that i was super stoked so i don't know how this dracula one uh went past me but i'll definitely check it out good i uh, that's a good call I quite, I quite like vampires. Vampires probably probably my favorite monster. Mm-hmm. Um, Same all brain. those underworld films too. Underworld yeah, is. I liked those too. I was just talking to my girl the other day. I feel like I mean I'm probably wrong because I'm not up to date on all my you know horror movies and vampire media, but I feel like there hasn't been a really good vampire movie in a while. Like I like I obviously you know the Twilights and you know stuff like that, but I mean like a like the vampire is a monster you know not like the oh they're friends and so you know what i mean like a really creepy vampire story i feel like there hasn't been one in a while the best example i have is that uh that dracula one yeah so. i would say <laughs> I, honestly what i always think of is uh what is it 300 days a night 30 days a night 30 days a night 30 Excellent. days a night that was that's like the last one i know that was forever ago and there's probably way more in between them but that's like when i think of vampire movies that's the one that comes to mind that was like that was awesome too right yes it is I, yeah. i'm pretty sure vampires? It yeah. oh yeah, yeah. you I haven't was, seen it yeah. no i was fuck, oh, long yeah, it's it's long place long. in alaska during the time yes. period of the year where they don't get sun for 30 days and what happens when there's no sun for 30 days, it's all night. And what creatures come out at night? Vampires. And yes. it's, it's tied directly nice. into like all the missing people that happen in Alaska, right? Like, I don't know if y'all are aware, there's a long running problem in Alaska to this day with missing persons. Mm-hmm. It has an increasing murder rate, um, an insane suicide rate because of the weather and the lack of light. Um, and a lot of these missing persons are people who are indigenous, people of color, uh, women um, are, are the most likely people end up disappearing in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so it's it's woven a little bit of like what actually happens in real life into the lore of how, yep, and all that's explainable because vampires. Yep. Hey, Dude. interesting. Cap, you yeah, got to watch it. You're, you're saying vampires are your favorite, man. You got to watch 30, 30 Days a Night, man. Come on. It's, it's all on Netflix. Uh, it might be. It's a, it's older. Ooh. I want to maybe like 2009, maybe it's even earlier. It's not on Netflix because I checked the other day. It might be on Hulu. Okay, yeah. I'm sure it's somewhere. Like I said, it's not. It's an older movie, so you'll be able to find it somewhere probably. Nice. Yeah, I'll you have got to any, check out is there any other ones, Cap, that you watch specifically during this year that you can think of? Oh, yes. Um, surprise, surprise, another vampire one, but Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Yes, that was honestly going to be one good. of my picks, dude. Yes, <laughs> I love that movie, man. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I love the, the backstory of like Dracula as well. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. Just everything about it is just so good. 
Yeah, when I was a kid, I was like obsessed with that movie. I loved Same. it. Yeah. Like you said, the backstory with Dracula. And I, I can say this a million times. I'm just a big fan of those, like I said, classic monsters. So you got Frankenstein there. You got Dracula. Yeah. You get some werewolf. Like, I don't know, just all the monsters. I love when they're like all included and they can all come play in the sandbox. And I mean, you got Hugh Jacks as uh, Van Helsing. What else could you want, right? Yeah, I love that movie. Gorgon, you yeah. fan of the Helsing? I am. I am. I I really like it, and quite. It's interesting you mentioned that. Um, there uh, God, that Irish actor, um, Jared Butler. He played Dracula in Dracula 2000 back in the day oh. when we were kids. Okay. Um, and it takes place here in the states, um, down in like Louisiana and that area, obviously. Um, as 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 everything's going down and like he starts speeding and like becoming back into his power, mm-hmm. but they tie Dracula in like a sphere of crosses, very religious. Um, and back to Judas Iscariot um, and, and the first betrayal and like the rope breaking. And like, so like Dracula comes from Judas because Dracula is Judas. Okay. The rope didn't break. Judas became Dracula. Um, and so, yeah, mm. and that's that's like the whole deal with silver, right? His issue with silver is everything back in the day was paid with silver. Yeah, so like okay. he has to be hung and burned at daylight and have the rope not break. And it's this whole, it's really cool. And it leaves the ending of it set up for a sequel with this lady being like, I am whoever Van Helsing, right at the end uh, and her family with it all. Um, and it's it was it was a really good, good movie back in the day. I, I liked it a lot. So if you want like, a, he doesn't keep his Irish accent a lot, but he does have a couple of words that they let out here or there that, sound a little more interesting as dracula and like Mm -hmm. if you if like i'm sure cap would be like oh yeah it's because he's saying it like he's from here (laughs) like yeah and uh it's it's definitely a good a good watch um i like to get a little more gory for my halloween (laughs) if i can all Um, right let's go i i say this is where i lose people hit me event horizon okay i haven't seen it it's an underappreciated masterpiece in my mind, I it's it takes place in space, and it's the ship goes through this portal that basically takes them to hell. Um, and and it's okay. got uh, Sam Neill and like uh, like all these great actors from the time. Lawrence Fishburne's in it. Oh, okay. Uh, it, but it gets very how do I put it? Um, like Pandorum meets Hellraiser on a ship. I okay. The, it's uh it definitely it's it's so good that like the Warhammer community, if you know what Warhammer 30k is, mm-hmm. they consider it a prelude to their lore and how like their hell dimension works. Oh, okay. Um that's that's how impactful it was. And it's <clears throat> I, the if you look at like a, the director talk about it at the time, you know, they didn't have control over the artwork for the posters and stuff, so the posters didn't make it seem like it would be the trailers didn't seem like it would be as gory and dark as it was. Uh, there was just a lot of mixed bag in marketing, but mm-hmm. it's really good. Absolutely worth the watch. It is a little more okay. gory. It's a little more wild. I'm into a little bit of space wild blood and gore. <laughs> um, so like I, I also like watching Pandorum uh, during the Halloween months as well. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I like vampires and slasher or let's do lots of blood, g- blood and gore and go to space. Um, so yeah, the new Hellraiser series is out on Hulu, mm-hmm. um, which if you guys are fans of that at all, any of you guys watching or listeners, it is incredible. I treat yourself, watch it. Yeah, I re- I just watched the new Hellraiser and I haven't seen the original one. I obviously know of it just because I mean, Pinhead's like iconic. But uh, I I really enjoyed this new one. Like I said, I don't have like the back knowledge. So maybe if I was like a huge fan of the originals, maybe I would feel differently. But I thought it was really good. The store, which like we've talked about this a little bit. I feel like horror movies, at least for me, I got to judge with like a different lens than I would a regular movie. In my opinion, I feel like horror movies are supposed to be a little cheesy like some things shouldn't make sense yeah i don't know i just again i look at it with a different lens so for me hellraiser it had a story that wasn't complete dog shit it had some creepy cool like creature kind of monster people and there was some cool uh kills and like interesting kills and to me it's like those are like the three boxes you need to tick for me and it met all those so like i said i really enjoyed it you know, another pretty good film, um, 
World War Z. That was quite a surprise. I did like that one too. Mm -hmm. I think I watched it once, so I don't really remember much of it, but I remember I enjoyed it. I've been yeah, watching too. nothing but vampire and zombie and werewolf stuff on Netflix when I can't sleep at night for the last month, just binging through different series. And I can't remember all of them that I've binged through in the late nights in the last month, but I can tell you I watched World War Z. Um, and then I just binged through the new Resident Evil series, the little eight episode one on Netflix. I know a lot of people in the Resident Evil community aren't aren't fans. I'm very much a fan, but I'm also a fan of the movies. So, like, I'm, I know we're about to have everybody who follows me <laughs> feel like gotta gotta stop following that podcast. That Gorgon yeah. guy likes that trash Resident <laughs> Evil stuff, but I, yeah, man, I I enjoyed it. I don't know, I and I think I enjoy it because I'm a comic reader, right? Mm -hmm. As as a comic reader, I like the expanded story. I like seeing what else is going on in the world. I, to me, the Resident Evil movies while not being canon to the main story or whatever, or great, well, yeah, Umbrella had all this stuff going on here, but, like, these other people could have absolutely came out as a side project. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, it's never made sense to me because, you know, Resident Evil game fans will be like, that doesn't make sense. Why would they be doing that? Bro, your most recent, like, Resident Evil games are about vampires, werewolves, and crazy hillbillies and stuff from, like, <laughs> forever away that are loosely attached to the main continuity at best other than one random character here or there. Like, don't tell me the plot can't tie in together. Yeah. It can. You're just choosing to not, not want it to because you don't mm -hmm. like it, right? Which is fine. Just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. I that simple and it's yeah i don't know i like them a lot i like the resident evil movies i i like the new resident evil show it's if you're into like zombie conspiracy i guess is where i'd put resident evil instead of zombie right like okay conspiracy theory kind of thing it's you don't trust the government because the government's done shady stuff and this government level organization's hiding shady stuff yeah it's very much a conspiracy theory cracker level uh, event in mind is, hey. I think if you look at it as under that lens, it's a little more fun. Is there anything like, I guess, because, you know, he and I are both, TJ and I are both here in the States. I, Halloween is kind of a, a, a fucking spectacle over here. Mm -hmm. I, is, is it as big in Ireland? Is, are there like Irish specific like Halloween stories and lore stuff that you guys have like that we wouldn't have here? Um... <laughs> It's, I wouldn't say it's as big, obviously, because no offense to any of you, but Americans over dramatize absolutely everything. I would say full of uh, <laughs> <laughs> But um, it's big ish over here. Like, it's, it's nothing dramatic, <laughs> but um, yes, I know, I guess. Do you all decorate? Um, yes, yes. Um, some, obviously, some houses more than others go yeah. way over the top. Mm -hmm. um there's like halloween themed shit and all that mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um, it's an occasion all right yeah <laughs> back where i'm from <laughs> in the in the midwest people go crazy for halloween like uh, with the decorations especially like in the my neighborhood we had mo like not even just one or two houses like multiple houses that just like went all out you i'm sure you guys have probably seen some of them on like yeah. tiktok and stuff where you know they got all the mannequins the music all this you stuff live up the street from the people who went viral for having the uh uh floating kid from stranger things right yes i did that was literally uh i don't live there anymore but where i'm the neighborhood that i'm from literally like two neighborhoods down is where that was and uh, actually, cool. update to that story, they had to take it down because a neighbor called and complained. So uh, whoever that was in Westmere, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, but yeah. I things, agree. Oh, God, we didn't even talk about Stranger Things as a Halloween thing. Oh, I, I, we're, throw we're that in there for the sure. Yeah, yeah, man. Throw Stranger Things in there for sure for your Halloween spooky watches, especially the last season. I would say last season, spookiest of them all, for sure. It's uh, funny. To, <clears> oh, go ahead, yeah. I haven't seen past episode one, season, or season one, episode two. So oh, I'm very oh. out of the wheelhouse here. Yeah. Okay, Dude. I'm not going to spoil Get off this call right now. Jonathan, <laughs> but like, <laughs> Vecna level power is like... Dude. 
Hell oh. yeah. Honestly, that's a good that's a good shout, Gorgon. Vecna is like no sim you know what I mean? I would oh, I love that. That's good. Vecna is way up there in power level. Like I it's, <laughs> it's nice. It's I, funny. Um, like see it's, the two episodes I've watched, I really enjoy, but it's just I I find it hard to from my attention span, I just cannot stick with something long term. Oh, dude, so I I'm give telling up you, far too easily. bite the bullet, man. It is so good. I can't, I can't rave about it enough. Just go watch it. That's all I can say. Y'all do haunted houses in Ireland? Is that something y'all do in Ireland? Is that a big, big spectacle? Haunted houses? Yeah. 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 There's quite a few. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, and that there's places as well around here that is like, they're you know properly hunted and they do like themes like nights based around that mm-hmm. okay so you know that's pretty cool we don't have any haunted places here in oklahoma near us we have back home there's a, a couple real haunted hotels and stuff in west texas where there were lots of murders and things back in the day that, that do crazy stuff for it here the biggest thing we have is a place called hex house um, and it's one of the spookier attractions in the nation for the Midwest. Lots of people mm-hmm. drive a long ways to come to it. And it's where I took my fiance for our first date. Hell uh, yeah. Was to, uh, yeah. When we met, neither of us were like, we're both like, mm, not sure if I want to put a title on it and call each other dating. So like our first date date, I would say would be going to a haunted house. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. Let's nice. scare the shit out of each other. See if we like each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured, uh, listen, if we're, I figured, you know, if we're both going to have a bit of an attitude toward each other from the start, then what, what better way to break that attitude off of each other than see see how we both react in, yeah. in a haunted house. Hell uh, yeah. And it worked. Well, we're here together like five years yep. later. So. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, we we had to uh, see each other in the purest form as well pure True. state of terror yeah <laughs> exactly that's how you really know if you love somebody yeah, yeah we had a background from we had a call it's called statesville uh statesville prison and it used to be the prison in our town but since then has been abandoned and everyone says that it's haunted and there's all you know all these stories about it being haunted so every year they turn the prison into a huge haunted house and like it's like a huge big thing everyone goes every year I'm into that. We have something, yeah, we have something similar. Um, about an hour, an hour and forty minutes away from me, there's a prison that used to be that used to help like hold hunger strikers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that's haunted, and they do big themes, big shit based around that as well. So, speaking of go, a quick question before we get out of here and move on. So, would you guys spend the night in a haunt? You're talking about these haunted places. What do you guys feel about ghosts and stuff like that? Do you guys believe in that kind of stuff? Would you set, spend the night in somewhere haunted? Before um, before we answer, is, have either of you seen American Horror Story? Yes. Most of it, right, not so all of it. Have you seen Murder House Season 1? Yes. Yep. So are we talking that kind of haunted house? Yeah. like our, I mean, obviously that's like, in a movie but like that place you're just talking about like that haunted prison like would you if someone was like hey matt let's go take some sleeping bags and post up all night like are you are you down for that kind of stuff or are you no nah, i'm not messing with that oh uh, no absolutely yeah <laughs> I, if, I'm gonna, if i'm gonna die i'm gonna die <laughs> Hey, I can respect that. Gorgon, I already know the answer to yours, but <laughs> I you absolutely bet my insane chaotic ass is gonna start. I, yeah. I I believe in in ghosts and all kinds of things and, and I practice, you know, my beliefs that that you know, within that realm for me as a person, but I I, I absolutely believe that they're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely would take my, I absolutely believe crazy ass and, and sign up to drop me in the most haunted house in America <laughs> for like 48 hours. I, mm-hmm. y'all can keep my phone. I don't need a camera to record it. Nothing. I just need a journal for me to put crazy thoughts in. And if y'all come back and y'all don't find me and you find a journal and it's wrote in my blood, then I guess y'all know that I was right. Suckers. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm going to leave y'all to that stuff. I'm out of here. Y'all can call me the chicken of the group, but yeah, I'm not messing with any of that. 
I've watched 15 seasons of Supernatural. <laughs> times, Cam's like, I, I know how ready. to handle myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I, with you on that, dude. <laughs> I don't know what it is as a kid. I just kind of fell in love with haunted houses and, and the idea of like things not being there. Even those that, you know, mm -hmm. we do for fun in shows. My little brother was the chicken of our group when it came to haunted houses, even just like the fun ones for kids. We had one in my hometown that the firefighters did held on. that was two stories in a two-story building. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to walk through and I guess my mom's waiting outside and all of a sudden there's a scream and she it chill went up her back because like despite all the screaming for everyone inside it sounded different because it was my little brother mm. as a kid and he screams in the house and comes bolting through the house backwards comes down this flight of stairs knocking people over this toddler and just wham running right out into the street my mom's having to try to scoop and be like baby it's okay it's fake it's just a haunted it's fine yeah. it's fine and like he's I'm, like i am out of here <laughs> i don't know what it is i learned as a kid just laugh just mm -hmm. laugh in haunted houses i what are they gonna do they come up to you just like being intimidating with a bloody chainsaw <laughs> yeah. shouting nonsense i and i just i just laugh i mm -hmm. i was the kid who would be like oh hi delbert oh hi yeah. russell and they're like yeah. oh, that's, you can't call me by hey, my Gary. name I'm, <laughs> I'm right like i'm a chainsaw guy right yeah. I'm whatever and i'm like no i know you yeah. and I, I think it helps just to remember that when you go to these haunted houses there's always some dude under the costume yeah some who, teenager some teenager or some dude who works at a local gas station who's like you know just like hasn't done laundry in three days and and mm. he's just super excited to be there dressed up in a costume i uh, yeah man like i it's you'll be fine just laugh yeah. at him i yeah. scary clown just laugh at it yeah yeah, see me, I feel like I'm not even like, I mean, you can call me a chicken, whatever, but I feel like I'm not even a chicken. Like, it's not that I'm afraid of like ghosts and stuff. Like, I'm I'm a skeptic, right? Like, I'm, I'm the skeptic guy. So I'm not going to say like, I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm very like, nah, you know what I mean? I could go either way on it. And my thought on it is like, okay, well, what if it is real? Like, well, I don't want to mess with that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't necessarily believe in it. I wouldn't say I'm scared of it. But what if it is real and there is like a freaking the devil is in this house? I, I'd rather just not mess with it. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to leave. I'll leave that to others. Um, Find me outside. I'll catch the documentary about it after the fact. But <laughs> say, I, ain't, I ain't taking my chances, bro. My, I'm keeping my soul. Thor <laughs> said he'll watch your death on Netflix in five years. Yep. <laughs> when they make a documentary about it, or it's on Unsolved Mysteries, I will be first in line. Unsolved until they get your end of the story. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> But uh, so before we get out of here, I do want to make a quick kind of, I guess you could say announcement, uh, not really an announcement, but this is something I don't know if he necessarily started it himself or, you know, heard it from somebody else. But one of our good friends of the show, Derek, every year he always puts out uh, this uh, thing. I don't really know what you would call it, but the idea is that uh, for Halloween, instead of giving out candy, maybe consider uh, giving out some comic books during Halloween. You can go to your local comic shop, hit the dollar bins. You know, no one's expecting you to give away, you know, uh, Hulk 181 or anything like that. But, you know, just go out, get some uh, cheap comics, throw in a couple comic books with your candy this year. And who knows, you could be, that could be the first comic that that uh, kid ever gets. And it could, you know, spark a love for reading. So I just really think that that's an awesome idea and something really cool that us as comic nerds can do for the community. So again, I just want to put that out there for this Halloween season. If you guys are able to, if you have the means, consider picking up some cheap comics and throwing those out. Double check the comics you pick up, make sure they're age appropriate for the age of children that would be trick-or-treating. Yes. All right. We all know the kind of comics that we don't want to be throwing in the bin. <laughs> All right. Nobody, no, no five-year-old, little six-year-old needs to go home with, with a fresh copy of, of some story where right off the bat, this curl in a chainsaw just guts this dude's yeah. head and blood all <laughs> over the page. Okay. Yes. Please all be right, responsible with the content. We all know we're talking about here. Gorgon, thank you. That's a great note to add on there. But yeah, like I said, just something that us nerds can do to kind of give back to the community. And I just, like I said, wanted to put that out there for everybody. Yeah. I like it. That's a, that's a good idea. I like it. Awesome. So that's really all I think we have for today. We went over our favorite spooky time reads. We went over some of our favorite movies we like this time of year. 
Uh, do you guys got anything else for the lovely folks at home about this Halloween season? Anything else you'd like to say? Don't die. <laughs> Nobody's putting weed candy in your kids' candy and giving it out to them for free. <laughs> if you do have reason to suspect a neighbor is doing so, please notate their location and let one of us know so we can perform our civic <laughs> duty of quality control checks and intercepting that candy before it gets to your kids. You Make know, citizens it's, arrest. It's the least we can do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody has to take it off the kids' hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Cap's your guy. Well, guys, that's it. Thank y'all for coming out with us. Thank y'all for nerding, hanging out, listen to what we read. Um, let us know down in the comments below or tag us on Twitter. Y'all know where to find us. Um, and let us know what you guys are reading this Halloween, what you guys are watching. Uh, hope your stacks are fat. Hope you guys have a great Halloween season. Your baskets are full, that you stay hydrated. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. It's been wonderful. I'm going to do something.